Hi, I'm Professor Goins. In this video, I'm going to look at a, another part of geometric series. So geometric series part two, we're going to look at what's called the interval of convergence. First and foremost, remember that for a geometric series, this, this series is equal to A over 1 minus R, as long as the magnitude of R, the absolute value of R, is less than 1. What I want to do is consider the following function defined as a geometric series. F of x is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of 3 times the quantity x minus 1 over 2 to the nth power. What I want to do is I want to find the domain of this function. Okay? First and foremost, recall that the domain a, so this, this real number a, is an element of the domain of the function. This is a shorthand way of saying a is in the domain of f. If and only if f of a, which is equal to this in, in the series, converges. Okay, the only values for which this function has in its domain are those for which the corresponding series is converging. Look at the function we have here and look at the series that I have up here. And I can match a is 3 and r is x minus 1 over 2. What that tells me is that in order for a number to be in the domain, the requirement, so the requirement here, Right, when you look at functions in your pre-calc calc 1 class and you're trying to find the domain of a function, you have to look at the domain restrictions, right? I can't divide by zero, negatives can't be under radicals in the majority of your courses. And in this case, the requirement is that the value of, the absolute value of the r has to be less than one. The requirement, absolute r less than one, gets replaced with, or r gets replaced with x minus one over two. Now I have to solve this absolute value equation. Okay. The way I solve an absolute value equation where the absolute value is on the smaller side of the inequality is I rewrite this as follows. X minus 1 over 2 it has to be between negative 1 and 1. Solving this, if I multiply through by 2, I get negative 2 is less than x minus 1 is less than 2. Adding 1 gives me minus 1 is less than x is less than 3. Therefore, this right here is the domain of this function right here. Okay. If I plug in any number between minus 1 and 3, any x value between there as an input, this series will be convergent. Anything outside of that interval, this series will be divergent. All right, what I want to do is I want to take a look at that interval. I want to look at the number line. And let's say I was to plot, so negative 1, I can't include, 3, I cannot include, but the domain consists of everything in between, okay? Now what I want you to imagine is what if I have a circle where this lies along the diameter? And in particular, I'm going to look at an open circle. That's a bad circle. Now, if I think of, again, this interval lies along the diameter of the circle, and the radius of the circle is, say, here. So I'll, actually, let me use a different letter because we're using r over here. And I'll just write this as radius. And since this is a circle, we can also talk about the center of the circle. And the center of the circle would be right here. Well, how are those related to this interval? Notice that the center of the circle lies halfway between those two endpoints, and the radius of the circle is the same thing as half the length of that interval. Okay, so now let's put up some terms here. The interval of convergence. Again, this I'm just going to just talk through. The interval of convergence is the entire interval on the um, x-axis for which the series is convergent. So in this particular case, the interval of convergence would be minus 1 to 3. The radius of convergence
is half the length of the interval, right? Because if I represent it from the center to this end point here, the same thing as from the, this point to there, the radius is the same thing. And of course, we'll think of it generally, we're not going to have the circle, we're just going to have an interval, but the radius is half that length. The length from minus one to three would be four, therefore, the radius is two. And the center of convergence. We list the x value in the middle of that interval. And the x value in the middle of this interval would be 1. Okay, so this is minus 1, 1, uh, or sorry, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. The radius is 2, that's a length. The center is the center of this interval. Now, why did I put a circle there? Well, when you take a course in complex analysis, you'll see why we embedded that circle there, but just for us, the center is the middle of the interval and then the radius is half the length of the interval, okay? Let me clean this up here and then let's walk through an example of a, in a geometric series. Let's find the interval of radius and center of convergence. Now that we know what those three, things, those three things are, let's start with an infinite series. I'll define a function as an infinite series, and then let's walk through how to find the interval, the radius, and the center of convergence. All right, let's list the function as f of x is equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity of one over two to the n times the quantity two x plus one over three to the end. All right, starting point is I have to put it in the form for a geometric series. Notice I've got two different terms there that have a power of n. This when I go to my solution. Both of these terms here have a power of n, so I have to write the whole thing as a power of n. That would give me uh, 2x plus 1 over, then I have 2 times 3, which is 6, and then that whole thing to the nth power. Okay, so in other words, I would take the nth power outside of this fraction, and this fraction, multiply the fractions together, and then take the nth power of that. All right, notice in this case that the r value is 2x plus 1 over 6. And what we have to do is we have to look at our requirement, which means the magnitude of r has to be less than one. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. I have, again, the magnitude of r less than one, r being two x plus one over six. Okay. And we talked over here briefly about how to solve absolute value inequality, so let's walk through that. Remember when I had the absolute value on the smaller side of an inequality, what I do is I start by writing the expression under the absolute value, 2x plus 1 over 6, the expression inside the absolute value in the middle, and then I make that less than 1 and then bigger than negative 1. Okay. 
My job here is to then isolate x. So if I multiply through by 6, negative 6, less than 2x plus 1, less than 6, <coughs> subtract 1, minus 7 is less than 2x is less than 5, divide by 2, this gives me x is less than 5 halves and greater than negative 7 halves. On the <coughs> x-axis then, any value in between here, bigger than negative 7 halves and smaller than 5 halves, would give me a convergence series, and therefore this is the interval of convergence. How about the center and the radius? Let's do the radius first. What's the length from 5 halves to negative 7 halves? So let's, let's write this as the, can your markers stick in? Okay, so I've got the length of the interval of convergence. That would be 5 halves minus negative 7 halves, which would be 12 halves, which is 6. And remember that, so that the length of the interval, remember the radius was half the length, therefore the radius of convergence is 3. All right, there's a couple different ways we could find the center. Well, one thing I know is that the center is halfway between these, and the distance from, say, an end point of the interval to the middle would be 3. So what I could do to find the center is I could take, let's say, 5 halves minus 3, which would be 5 halves minus 6 halves, which would be negative one half. And this right here would be your center of convergence. It's the center of that interval. So again, this is how you find the interval of convergence, the radius of convergence, and the center.